Timesheets are entered on the Timesheet tab in Web Time and Expense Entry. We will add a new timesheet by clicking New Timesheet in the ribbon and selecting the appropriate timesheet period. In this case, we already have our timesheet open that we want to enter for October 1st. To add a line, click Add Line in the ribbon. You will see the following fields. Job, Job WBS, Labor Category, Pay Type, and Destination. You can enter the job by either selecting it from the drop-down list or just entering a few letters and it will filter on the letters you've entered. Acoustic Kitty. You can do the same with the job WBS code. If you know you're entering time against requirements, just enter a few letters. Requirements. Once you select the job WBS, you will notice the labor category is automatically populated. This information is pulled from the job card based on the labor category that's assigned to you. The default pay type is regular. Users should update this only to select an overtime or shift differential code. That's if it's applicable. And the destination is typically used in conjunction with danger and hazard pay. Let's take a look at this section here. Add more lines. If you're going to only have this one line on your timesheet, you can uncheck this box and click Save. And then you will go to your timesheet and you can enter your hours. But in our case, we do want to add more lines to our timesheet. So we will click the check box and click Save. So this line added successfully. That's great. You will see that the information you entered on the previous line pulls up again. And this is convenient because in our case, the only change we need to make is to the job WBS code because we want to charge to Acoustic Kitty again. But this time, we want to charge to training. And we do want to add more lines. So we go ahead and click Save. Another, another line was added. This time we want to charge to Twitter. Select the job WBS. And we are done with lines. Click Save. So we see an empty line here. And we can go ahead and delete this empty line just clicking the X. Now we can enter our hours. So let's say for requirements for Acoustic Kitty, on Thursday we worked eight hours. Enter a comment. and click OK. Note the bookmark. This shows that a comment has been entered for the hours. Let's go ahead and enter more hours. Say on Friday we did eight hours of training. And on Monday we did four hours of training. And spent five hours on Twitter. And on Tuesday, we spent seven hours requirements. So once you've entered your hours, you can go ahead and click Save in the ribbon to save the work that you've done.
So now that you've saved your timesheet, you realize that you need to make a change to your hours on one of the lines. Let's say you've entered the wrong number of hours and you want to go ahead and correct it. Let's go ahead and take care of that. For requirements, let's say you notice that you actually spent eight hours instead of seven. So go ahead and enter eight, tab over, and you will get a box that's requesting a change reason. So we will enter and correct hours and click OK. Let's go ahead and save our work. Now let's say you want to change, make changes to the job and job WBS code. After a line is saved, you can't change that, and let's try this. Click the pencil next to the line, and you see that it's grayed out. And the reason for this is that after you save, it keeps an audit trail, and you can't make changes to the job and job WBS, but you can make changes to the hours and keep leave a comment. Now, if you add a line, and let's say this time, we're charging to holiday. And let's say we took time off on Wednesday, enter eight hours. Now we want to enter another line. We're completing our time for the next day. Click Save, and we did some work on Thursday. And then we realized that actually we did not mean to charge to holiday. It's supposed to be PTO. And since we haven't saved our work since entering these lines, these two lines, I can go ahead and click the pencil here and make that change and change that to PTO. because a line was not saved after I entered my hours. We can go ahead and make changes to that line. Now we can click Save. Once you save your timesheet, you can exit your timesheet. If it's at the end of the timesheet period and time to submit your timesheet, then you can click Submit in the ribbon. And then you will get a notification that you have successfully submitted your timesheet. Let's say you want to print a copy of your timesheet. You can download a PDF of your timesheet by clicking Timesheet in the ribbon. And you can print this page if you want to. Let's say a supervisor has rejected your timesheet. When a supervisor rejects your timesheet, they supply a reason for it. And an email is sent out to you that your timesheet has been rejected and this is the reason. All you need to do is go into your timesheet, the rejected timesheet. You see that the status says rejected. You can make your change, and let's say the problem was that you charged nine hours to holiday when it should have been eight hours. Tab over, and it's asking for a change reason. Incorrect number of hours. Click OK, and you can save. Changes have been made successfully and submit your timesheet. Let's look at the ribbon here. We have an option for favorites. Let's click on that. The favorites function is used to save frequently used job and job WBS combinations. You select the job and job WBS to create your list and then click save favorites. New timesheets will automatically add favorites 
as lines with zero hours. Note that favorites will no longer be inferred once the period of performance has expired. If you want to know what your PTO balance is, you can click PTO balance in the ribbon. Keep in mind that your PTO balance will be decremented for usage once the timesheets are posted by accounting. Click PTO request in the ribbon. You'll get a box. To request time off, you enter the to and from dates, a description, and choose the appropriate job and job WBS, and then click save. Once you submit an, this, an email will be sent to your supervisor. Once your supervisor approves the PTO, this time is automatically added to the appropriate timesheet period. And yes, this information can be updated on your timesheet prior to submission. Looking in the ribbon, you have this option to enter on behalf of. If you're entering time on behalf of someone, you just click this option. And from the drop down list, select the person and click OK or save. The drop-downs will display as if the employee were performing their own data entry. Let's say you want to preview and print a prior timesheet from another time period. Let's say we want to look at the August 16th timesheet. Go ahead and click on that and then go into the ribbon and click on timesheet. So you see your timesheet here and you have options to print it.